Hey guys, welcome to Homesteading Through Our Eyes. Today we are going to finish up the last two of our 30 footers. Um, we dug the holes and we showed you the videos for that. And uh, we got almost all the way through and wanted to get a quick video in of actually completing the sono tube process. Um, we needed 30 sono tubes at four foot each and 12 inch diameter. Uh, we were lucky enough to find 21 of them on Craigslist for half price. Uh, when we went to the store to actually pick them up, these were actually, we needed two extra. So we went to pick them up. These were actually crushed, uh, bent, misformed some of them. I had to, literally there was only two good ones out of 30. So uh, the store didn't even store them as well as this guy did for two years. Um, so to begin the process, we got our grid all laid out with our lines and measured four feet between each row of columns. So we come on over here and we have our, our hole dug to 46 inches, which is below frost depth and code for New York State. So what you do with the sono tube, you see how your line is right where it needs to be, that's what's measured. So you just slip in your sono tube into the hole and make sure that the string or the line is going pretty much over the center. Um, with this hole there's rocks and protrusions in the way so we're gonna have to kind of uh, move it over a bit and then you can place your bracket you have a little play with your bracket instead of having it right in the middle you can have it towards the edge so if you were to need to this one fits all the way down in but if you were to need to and you got cut up on a rock <clears throat> you can cut these sono tubes come across lay a flat line mark it bring it up out of the hole measure wherever your mark is make four measurements equal all the way around run a string around the sono tube, mark it with a marker, and then come through with, we used a hacksaw, since we didn't have any electricity back here, and you just cut exactly where the line is, and then slip the tube back into the hole, and fill from there. Um, what I've been doing is laying a footer base of concrete in the bottom, uh, two to three to four inches depending on what the hole looked like and then slipping your sono tube down into that filling with concrete and then when you go to make sure this is level you want to backfill a little bit with dirt without tamping it down and then you can level this out you place a level on the side here level it out place a level on the side there level it out tamp the backfill, fill this the rest of the way, and then backfill completely. Um, we're gonna show you a video of that once we get to it. So let us get started and we'll be back in a few minutes. bags up here uh, well actually it was six by six we used the four-wheeler and stored them here make sure to have a tarp if you're gonna leave them out laying around you want to definitely have them covered uh, we had a few holes in the tarp and the bags kind of got wet and lumpy and hard here and there um, another thing is you probably want a better mask than this even if you're working with concrete but concrete dust, dust is not good to breathe at all obviously so uh, let's get started and we'll show you how to deal with these concrete bags. These, pound, these bags are 80 pounds. Uh, they come in 60 pounds and smaller as well. They're pretty heavy to move around, so keep that in mind. I'm laying mine vertical to line it up with the pan. 
make a slit at the bottom, slit up the side, get this flap out of the way, because if you don't, you leave that in the way, it's gonna get ripped and mixed in with your concrete. Flip the bag over. And go ahead. Uh, what you want to do next is add water. Uh, this bag calls for about three liters, but we found that we've been using a decent amount less. So when you're starting, just play around and find your mixture. We'll show you in a minute how uh, soupy or non-soupy to make it. So what we're also doing since we had our hand pump is bringing water back here in this 55 gallon jug. Uh, sometimes we use five gallon pails to come back and fill it up one by one. Sometimes we take it down to the watering station, fill it up there and bring it up with the four wheeler. But this is how we've been getting our water back to the working site. We just use this uh, half gallon jug and cut the top off so it fills with water quickly. We found that two of these have worked for one bag. You can see all the bags have gone through already. About a uh, 110, 120, quite a lot of work, but you don't need a gym membership and you get things done yourself, save a little bit of money. So what I like to do is form the pile in the middle and have a lower basin and a top basin. Uh, they say to create the basin in the middle, but I found that working and mixing that way was about soupy you just want to make sure you go through and scrape down deep and you can see the dry bits so just make sure that everything that you come across you can see down there a little dry everything you come across is mixed up and dry so when you get towards the end of your bucket in order to move these I like to scrape it all back here this is about what you want your consistency to be. You want it to hold together, but you don't really want it watery. Too soupy of a mix will be less strong and allow for your support columns to be weaker. So make sure you have a consistent, not sloppy, but wet. We have about two and a half um, bags of concrete that we had mixed up and is down in there. So you just uh, take your shovel and you dump the concrete down in there. And once you think you got a, enough in there, you go around with a tamper, or in this case, a hoe, large hoe. Um, this, like I said, this hole was a little larger, so it took about two bags of concrete to make a three inch or so concrete footer. You want to make a wider footer than the sono tube so that the column doesn't just sink down into the ground. It has concrete around it now instead. So you place your sono tube down in the cement mixture. You get it about even with your string. Push it in a little bit. And that should get you going. And what we're gonna do next is probably pour a little bit more concrete. We have one bag going in another tub. The rest of this, probably gonna pour that in the sono tube backfill a little bit with some dirt and then level up the sonotube again at 
after it's backfilled and has a little more concrete in it. You're going to be leveling two to three times to four times just on your sono tube alone. It doesn't take long, not too hard. Good to get it right. So uh, we'll get the next bag going and we'll be back with you guys shortly. So when you're about two bags into the sono tube, you want to go through and before you put your next back it, back, batch in, you want to start tamping and making sure that there's no pockets or air bubbles. You want to go in the same spot until you feel solid. You will feel some solid, but break through until you can't get any further. You can kind of give it a good test by watching the same wetness all the way through. Sometimes you'll get stuck around here, give it a few more jabs, and it'll work its way through. This just ensures that it all holds together and gives you a stronger structure. So I'm going to level these up. I put about half a bag of concrete on top of the other tamped stuff. So you just go back around. I had already dumped a wheelbarrow down in there. So you just go back around and throw a little bit more dirt down in there. Just give it a nice solid base. You take your level. like it needs to come uphill quite a bit. So before it's really concreted down and solid and formed and you tamp anything down, you want to make sure these are level. Went a little too far, but it's nice to go far because then you can pull her back really easy. Right there is about level. Check that side. Check this side. Get it to about square. Close on first. Have enough rough, rough hands as it is. Take your tamper and at first just gently go around and tamp in all the loose backfill that you just put in there. Solid, compact ground, when you dig it up and move it out, probably makes three to four times the amount of space. And then when you backfill, if you don't tamp, you won't be putting enough dirt back in the hole. So you just go around in the circle, closest to the sonal tube at first. So we got this all tamped up and ready to go for your final layer before you put your bracket on. You want to go a little above grade as well as have a pliable mix to work with. And you want to round off the top so that water or moisture or anything instead of sticking around staying on top will run down and off your footer This will bring all the moisture to the top and pound all the rocks in so it'll also make it smooth instead of rocky and bumpy and edgy. Tapering up the sides a bit more here. 
ready to install the bracket. So you put your line back up. Make sure your bracket goes where you want it. You simply take your bracket, slip it under the line, find your center point on the string and the bracket, as well as the footer, and just go ahead and press down, wiggle back and forth. So you get to your desired depth. Tap the concrete around the bottom piece of the bracket. Tiny bit. And then take your level. And level the bracket off. Looks like we're good this way. It looks like we need to tilt uphill a little bit more. So we're level. Now we're level. Both ways, uphill and horizontal. So you want to let that set for about another, uh, you know, hour, two hours and just come back and make sure it is level still the same way I just did again. Um, it'll be harder obviously but uh, we're all done. So the footers are done. On to deck building finally. It takes a lot of work. About 140 bags of concrete. Uh, what? Two weeks. About two weeks worth of work and uh, mixing by hand, but well worth it and it's done and we're excited to move on. So stay tuned, like, comment, add advice. Uh, up and coming, we're going to be building our deck. So check back uh, how to do that. Take care. Have a nice day. Check you later. Peace.